they've they've uh, they brought down our, our our confidence so low that we don't know how to fight for ourselves. You know, it's Not just like our confidence, but information. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, like, yeah, and stuff like. Yeah. But no. Because that's like, why more people. That's why as all this information has started coming out, more people have been protesting. More yeah, people come out and shit. Yeah, yeah. And that's why you know you'll hear some people who want to romanticize like, oh, can we just go back to when we all got along? No, because that's when we were more ignorant. That's when things. It, once again, it's just it's just reinforcing the status quo. Yeah. You just want and things to go we back. All get along? It was more so like in a state of ignorance. Like yes. you know, it was a state of bliss yeah. where you were unaware. And I yeah. think it's like, oh shit, man, now damn it, like my eyes are open, I want to go back to sleep. And it's like it really is that comfort. And yeah. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it because you know, going back to like mental health or like relating it to mental health, it's like when you're in a depression, you know, it's like you have to go through those things sometimes to just survive. And some people just don't have the, they don't want or they don't have the ability to even make decisions and get on one side or get on the other. So, yeah. Anyway. And not just that, oh, not just that, is that some people have families too. So like, like a lot of people, when I saw videos, a lot of people were fighting against, like there are people who protest and fight against the, the, the police and the, the people who are trying to shut them down. Those people like, like, like speaking personally, like I've always like, like self-preservation again, it's like, I want to do things with my life that I want to like inspire the people to do. But then again, in my mind, I'm like, I'm just like, why the fuck am I not fighting? You know, like, why am I not like out there fighting for all this shit? And it's like, we've had that shit in grade where we have other priorities or like some people have families and they can't, it's like- You always think about, things. cause you're only thinking about the collateral because like you said, exactly. so, so basically, and, and I guess this would be like the last thing um, we talk about um, is, is that, so this is a left wing space. I'm a left winger. My politics are very left wing and shit. And when I say that, what I mean is I want uh, uh, as many different voices that want to get along, there's many different people that want to get along and shit, uh, to work together and shit. And so, um, uh, uh, shit, what was I trying to say? We, we were saying self, it was self-preservation, but what was the bigger thing? Oh, that like, uh, Oh, dissidents and shit. Okay, so, oh, the history of left-wing politics and shit. So left-wing shit has been a, quite a disadvantage and has, has suffered a lot of losses and shit. And what's happened since, um, so like with the Cold War, you know, saying there was the Red Scare and shit, um, there's been, you know, this just back-to-back -back movements and trying to undo the reforms of FDR and, you know, all the different shit like that, right? And so, you know, left-wing, you know, left-wingers, a lot of our leaders and shit, they get, whether it's social justice or economic justice or something, they get murdered. So that's one of the things about self-preservation. We, we hear the stories about, you know, the government and shit, you know, going to fucking up people's families or fucking artists. up shit. You about want to talk about I mean, creating an oh. art form where you're actually making a difference in the community and, you know, speaking out on certain things. And it's like, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, people are not going to talk about yeah, well, it's, the thing is, it's, that it's, it's not even so much that. It's, it's not even always that explicit. What happens more so often is like with Jackson, Jackson Pollock, um, who was uh, uh, part of the abstract movement and shit. So people, uh, 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 the CIA and shit, as a move of, of soft power, they started um, using his art and uh, uh, they set up like fake institutions and fake newspapers and shit and said that this is the new art form, this is the, what artists should aspire to because it's all about uh, cultural hegemony or cultural supremacy of saying culturally, this is what is going to be um, given value. It's almost like taking, it, taking away its power, right? Like it's individuality, is that what you're saying? Like well, no, no, it's using it as, it's using it as a tool of soft power to encourage cultural supremacy or cultural hegemony as it's sometimes called. Because if you have all these um, magazines and if you have all of these powerful people in these institutions saying that this is what's considered high quality art and this is what's considered garbage and shit, then you're gonna come to accept that. And so there's a, cause there's a certain wing of critics and artists who look at Jackson Pollock and the whole abstract painting movement and they think the whole thing was a CIA op. And it's like, no, it was co-opted by the CIA, unknowing to most of the artists and people involved in shit. Right. They, thought that pe they thought that they were just running into people who were interested in their shit and wanted to platform it. Mm -hmm. They didn't realize that the, that the fucking, um, uh, these clandestine organizations were platforming this shit. And because the thing is like, so much of postmodern, excuse me, of modern art movements have been about challenging, Polit uh, challenging political uh, and social uh, narratives, yes. meta-narratives.
Yeah, it kind of reminds me of like, well, it's kind of the same thing that happens culturally, you know, like a culture can have something that's very meaningful politically and socially and it's very powerful and then it's all of a sudden taken onto the mainstream or it's um, culturally appropriated mm -hmm. to the point where it just becomes like this trendy thing that everyone forgot the meaning about, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's like, again, where we cannot, we cannot be neutral in those situations, especially now that we have such a voice you know, to even to the people around us, who cares if 10 people hear you on your Instagram? Like, mm -hmm. those 10 people were just educated on something they had no idea about. Yeah. So why not use it? You don't know where that, where those seeds, you know, are going to grow. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it just reminded me of how, no, actually, you know, no. tying the art to, like, culture, mm -hmm. culture and mainstream. Um, like, the cool things that we all see, you know, they all kind of stem from something mm -hmm. that usually means a lot to a certain group of people and it has a lot of meaning so it's important to look into those things you know yeah yeah and um and then another thing about left-wing movements uh, that we got to remember is that because we're at such a di at such a disadvantage um in different in institutions and access to resources and shit like that is we have to be mindful of these things like i get sick i get sick of when i hear leftists and shit or people that are involved poli you know left-wing politics whom once again the deification of like, oh, you know, such and such activist was so poor that they had to borrow, you know, water and shit like that. I was like, no, I was like, no, these people who are doing, putting their lives on the line and shit for society, they should be living comfortably or they should, you know, have a little, you know, they should be, they should be fine. You know what I'm saying? I'm sick of like, it's this um, romanticization of, of poverty yeah. and that somehow being anti-capitalist or being critical of capitalism means that you have to live in poverty yeah. which just which under a capitalist framework just takes away your ability to challenge it yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah. and then people want to like criticize Colin Kaepernick mm -hmm. it's like um, yeah there's a certain point where money does become a hindrance to your humanity but for somebody like him I don't feel like that's the way so I'm like yeah if he has a deal with Nike and if he can yeah. and if he can finesse the NFL and shit like that and continue on keeping his message up and shit I was like I was like, yeah, he's protecting himself because they, they're going to, because even if the government doesn't try to take you out and shit, so much of the general public who see the shit as a threat, yeah. you know, the reactionaries, the, you know, right wingers, the conservatives and shit, the, the Nazis, the fascists and shit, yeah. right? They're going to be trying to take you out and they're, you know, so much more, you know, prominent. So it doesn't even have to just be the government. Right. And so I, I, just, I just kind of feel like people, you know, it's like, yeah, we need to be fortified mentally and emotionally to stand up for ourselves and express and, and stand up for other people, but also understand that um, we can be in danger too. That we can be in danger, and that sometimes you got to throw them hands, or sometimes you got to be able to uh, come to you got to come to terms. You got to speak on the terms. Uh, you can't be naive about your circumstances and shit. If I know that there are a bunch of people around me, or certain people in certain groups who. Uh, you know, saying carry guns and shit. I'm not gonna go and try to start a fist fight with them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have to try to maybe confront them in different terms or different playing field. Yeah. But there might need, may need to be a confrontation and shit. So it's just that balance of knowing that, like, yeah, you need. To, there's times measuring how much you need to speak up, yeah. if you need to speak up, and what step B might be depending on the reaction you get. Because in 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 all in. The, the main thing is you're most effective to the movement that you support in, you're more, in more than yeah. one capacity. Because yes. you, think, you think right away it's like, oh, I gotta grab a gun, fight them, or I gotta, I gotta scream at them, I gotta throw, I gotta... Yeah. No, it's, it's so many, there's a gajillion different ways you can That's go about it, good. and it's mm -hmm. endless. And in fact, you're more, sometimes you're more effective writing a book, or you're more effective... So, you know, speak, speeches, you do yeah. speeches, or you're more effective just talking to one person at a time. Are. You know, yeah. like to the movement, like, oh, no, continue. Yeah, oh, yeah, just one person, one person, yeah, manuals, one person at a time, you know, writing articles, blah, 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 you know, it, 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 the list kind of goes on, you know, you could even, you could even, you know, release a popular snack product with, like, in fact, the old, in, in fact, I'll get, pull, once again, pull, I'm kind of the history guy, if you're wondering, yeah. but the, I'll pull again from history, you could even really go under their noses mm -hmm. and, really send out the message because okay the so example from history there was a time in England when only the kings the when the the first Protestant king came into place and the people that wanted the Catholic king were really protesting it but they couldn't show it in public so the way they did it is that they painted this painting 
and that this painting actually hung in one of the Protestant royals' family's houses, and they had no idea that this was a Catholic, Catholic loyalist painting. Wow. So it's like it Cesar Borgia. Exactly, and it's and it's actually a painting <laughs> of a glass of wine with a, a steel glass of wine, and then passing a ring over it. Wow. So that that ring symbolizes. That ring symbolizes the crown, the monarchy, and that pond is the English Channel. And the other side of that pond is France, and the and the north side of that pond is England. And the person in France is the Catholic pretender to the throne, the king, that they want on the crown, James the Third. That's the one they wanted. And the actual, and in, in truth, the national anthem of England is act was actually written in support of the Catholic pretender. So, and they're still using that as their anthem right now. Yeah, I did not know that. Yeah, and they're using, it, that, that's in support of their opposition, and they only just recently said, oh, it's okay for you to be Catholic if you're King of England again. <laughs> so they only, they only just allowed that. But, but <coughs> that, and you know, so both their, their national anthem. Subliminally. Yeah, subliminally. Yeah. So you could even go, you could go under their noses, under their heads, you know, over their heads, whatever way. So you, you don't have to, you don't have to, have the there's more than one way. Yeah, there's more than one way. A gajillion. That's what works for. I think that is such an important point that you just made, and I, I feel like that should be voiced more, and we need to talk about it a lot more because yeah. we forget. You know, it's so it's such in our face, like war, fighting, punk rock. Like you have to go in there and be like battlefront. Super confrontational. And, yeah, super confrontational, and it's like when you think about again bringing it back to like movies or like stories that you know kind of not only warn us about the future but just you know add to the possibilities of things yeah, that we can let happen movies. and yeah. it's like if you pay attention to these books if you pay attention to these movies they're telling you that these are societies you know yeah. infrastructures of anarchy that were underground like you just said yeah like and so there's everything, you know, you have everyone from like handymen, construction people, gardeners, doctors, like nurses, they're all part of the, you know what I mean, of like the revolution, but it's like quietly and that's okay. And it's like, yeah.